All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. I hope everyone is doing amazing. It's Friday. The market just closed. I hope everybody had an amazing trading week. And last time I think I talked to you guys was two weeks ago, I'm guessing. So let's get this thing going. Um, let's talk about USD CAD, USD Singapore, USD Yen, a little bit of silver and Bitcoin. And there was two questions I got. So because I asked you guys on Twitter, if there was any questions that you would like me or analysis, trade reviews or whatever you guys would like me to review. So I have one from Neil. And then I have a message from David basically talking about this, but we'll get into that uh, oops, at the end of it. Okay, so let's start with analysis first. USD CAD, you guys would remember from a couple videos ago, I was short from this daily supply zone. Since then, my first target has been hit. I'm holding the other one right now for a longer term uh, trade. Absolutely hate being in these longer term trades. I say it every time after I'm out or even during the trade that I'm never going to do this again. I just hate holding trades for long periods of time. But you know what? When you see a setup, you've got to take it. But you know what? I just don't like being in these positions for weeks at a time. Um, so that was the daily supply we got short at. Stop loss was above here. Risk is back to break even now. First target was hit at this opposing demand zone kind of over here. So first target was hit. Now I'm just kind of holding the other one. Now, since then, we have another daily supply zone. Also, I took a trade in this and a couple of the group members took a scalp today. Uh, we're going to talk about that trade review too. Because that one I'm out of and this one I am not currently. So there is a new daily supply. We kind of have this break of this overextended market. Three rally base rallies in a row. We consider it overextended. We have that break. So here is another daily supply that I would be interested in doing business at somewhere up in here. Uh, as for the next buying opportunity, you know, I mean, I'm sure you could find an opportunity in here. I think there's a better one maybe right below. I'm sure there's, this is not a very good one, but those are areas that I would prefer looking for buys at. Uh, right now, no. Up here, definitely be looking for selling opportunities because it's a rally based drop supply zone, strong drop that also broke the upward momentum. So I'm considering that elastic band effect. OK, uh, if you guys don't really know what I'm talking about, I recommend going into the tips playlist in my YouTube channel. I'll link it down below in the description. Should be like first or second line saying tips playlist, talking more about the supply and demand methodology. OK, so. This was the four hour supply we are watching. Here was at the time, the four hour demand. Let's just mark this in black so it gets easier for us. So when I first saw this, I thought to myself, okay, prices are coming up into four hour supply, kind of rally based drop supply zone right here. So I wanna be looking for selling opportunities, right? So with prices up here in this area of supply, I want to be looking for selling opportunities. So what I did is I went down to the 30 minute and I saw kind of this break of upward momentum. I saw this demand zone getting removed and that was telling me, hey, you know what? Prices are starting to turn from inside out using that multiple time frame analysis. That would be the supply zone that I got short at. Stop loss would be a structure stop. So I'd want it above this high, kind of this kind of structure. So I put it above there. Uh, target was hit, clearly. Uh, I think I got out basically like down here. I think I got 1.5 to one because I was already holding a USD CAD short. So I'm not interested in like holding multiple and multiple positions of a short position in USD CAD. So you know what, just limiting my risk, just kind of getting in, getting out, looking at these scalps for quick opportunities. Um, definitely, if you're holding a two position trade, I would take one here and then probably my second one would be right before here. And that's what a couple people did in the group. They took that short setup and they hit their first target and then their tech, second target was like down here for a much larger profit margin. Okay, once again, price is coming up into that higher time frame supply zone. We saw the break of 30 minute upward momentum. We kind of have this rally based drop supply zone. So I wanted to look for selling opportunities. It's a nice quality zone, strong drop, you know, 
moved all the way down here, it removed opposing zones, understanding how price turns from inside out using multiple time frame analysis. Once again, go into my tips playlist. I'll link it down below if you want to learn more about it and understanding multiple time frame analysis. Literally, there's a lot of really good tips videos in there. It's basically kind of my whole methodology, but it's kind of scattered around and it's hard to uh, like do the whole top down right? without actually having the one on one support. And that's exactly what we do in the Moneyball Trading private group. You know, we take every trader. We try to take every trader from struggling trader to consistently profitable trader in 90 days by following the step by step plan of learning the methodology through the guided mentorship of the daily and 2x weekly meetings we have with each other, trade reviews, and the weekly meeting um, pre-market. And the daily recaps is where we talk about what happened, any pros, cons, any trade reviews, anything that gets brought up in the group. And then you also are inside the private Discord group chat, which is nice because you're always communicating with traders that are trading the same methodology, right? So we won't talk about much more about that. Uh, USD Singapore update on this. I got stopped out of this one. You guys know I was short from this daily supply. Um, I know some people caught the very extreme like that and they got out. Uh, me took kind of the whole one. <laughs> so kind of got stopped out of that one. That's okay. USD Singapore has been on an absolute tear lately. So that's a quick update on that one. Rally based drop daily supply zone. Stopped out. USD yen, USD CAD. Which one was I going to talk about? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, let's talk about silver. This is one of the charts that one of you guys asked me on Twitter for. You wanted my analysis on Twitter. You, or my analysis, you wanted my analysis on silver. Uh, you didn't give me a time frame to be looking at, so I'm just going to be ballparking it, looking at maybe the daily time frame, because that's usually what my highest time frame is. That would be my daily supply. I really like this at $19 mark. Rally base drop daily supply. As for demand, we don't have anything. I'm sure you're going to get some demand down in here. More so, I think right down at the extreme is the better area, but even drawing it like that is fine. So as of now, based on the daily time frame, I would not want to be trading this. I would be waiting for prices to come down in here or up here. Looks like we are reacting off of this four hour time frame supply zone right up here. Hopefully you guys can see this. Here's that kind of four hour rally based drop. Prices are trying to react from it. And that's what's happening right now. I think we have some demand down here that might push it further up, but uh, I wouldn't want to be necessarily selling or calling this a daily supply zone because this is very wiki. It's more of a liquidity search telling me, hey, you know, this is where the orders are, somewhere located up in this area. So daily supply, this is where I'd be interested in doing business at. Okay. Bitcoin. Let's talk about Bitcoin because this was an opportunity. I don't trade Bitcoin, but I know a lot of people like to see the analysis and it. honestly, it gets views because the Bitcoin hype is still there. So, you know, you upload a Bitcoin video, everybody watch, wants to watch a Bitcoin video. So weekly supply zone, let's talk about it. Weekly supply here, it's been tested once before. So we could still look for selling opportunities again if prices come back up into the supply zone, but I might wanna do smaller risk and wait for a better evidence of sellers coming in because it's been tested once. So we could assume that if prices have gone into a zone once before, it might possibly go deeper into it because it has been tested before. So there is less sell orders. Okay. This is just how I see the market. If you don't see it like that, then I'm guessing you probably still wouldn't be watching this video right now. So with prices coming into the weekly supply zone, we should be looking for what everybody would you want to be a buyer or a seller? You want to be a buyer, right? Not a seller. Sorry. Even I screwed that up. So what we see, is I see this momentum line. I would draw my upward momentum line like this. I would see, this is like a classic setup too. That's why I was like so surprised. Very clean setup, like removal of demand here. Broke the demand, we broke the upward momentum line, telling us, hey, you know, 
trend is starting to change from inside out. We're inside, you know, weekly uh, weekly supply. My daily time frame has shown evidence of price starting to turn. So it's like, hey, we might have, you know, some selling opportunities coming in. There is the whole daily supply zone. You wouldn't be wrong just to push the sell button on that pullback. Price turning from inside out. You might be thinking, who the hell is selling up here? Why, the, why would you want to sell when prices have came all the way from down here, all the way up here? Well, because based on how I trade and how we view the market, I see the market possibly turning now from inside out, breaking those demand zones. And that's basically how I see it. Right? Sellers trying to step in. Price is going to change from inside out. So if we go down to the four hour, which might be either the entry time frame for maybe for you guys, that would be the four hour supply zone. And then we also have another rally base drop at the extreme. So that is the four hour drop base drop inside the daily supply zone that we just drew out. And there is another rally base drop on the four hour. So that would be your entry target or your entry. And that would have been the trade. Would have worked out pretty well so far. Right? I think if I would have taken this, my stop would probably have to go above this next zone. That's probably how I would do it. It's kind of like a rally base drop base drop, a level on top of level. So if you really want, you could go like that. It'd be more aggressive, but uh, same thing. Works out fine, right? Silver, we did that. CAD, we did that. Singapore, we did that. USD yen. Let's talk about it because I think this might be an interesting shorting opportunity. I don't think I tweeted it, but I will tweet it. Uh, I have the picture right here still. So the USD yen, weekly time frame. Let's just look at this on the weekly on this picture. We have... Right now, price is in a weekly uptrend. Clearly, based on how I see it, we're in a weekly uptrend. We have weekly demand down here, an unconfirmed weekly demand right here, rally based rally. But where are we sitting in right now? We're sitting inside a weekly supply zone, right? Re weekly rally based drop. And this is also monthly. No, I said monthly and weekly. So if we actually go to the monthly time frame, I think we're doing really well so far, guys. Good meeting. Not a good meeting. This is a recording, but call it a meeting. Good recording so far. We have that monthly supply zone, rally base drop. And we have another one, rally base drop at the extreme. So this is definitely an area of supply where I would be interested in looking for selling opportunities. And actually, let's go down into a smaller time frame and see what we can actually do with this. Beautiful zone. I love it. Beautiful zone. I love it. Uh, definitely at an area where I'd be looking for buying, sorry, not buying, but selling opportunities. I wouldn't be interested until down in these areas for buying. Okay. So let's just quickly just draw out this weekly zone. So we know where we are. Let's change it to red. And so we understand we're in weekly, monthly, kind of all that area of supply. Uh, let's go down to the four hour. Four hour. Uh, let's go daily really quick. I'm just seeing over here. Nope. Four hour. So on the four hour, we still have this rally base rally to work through. But if we went down to the one hour, I know there was people that was took this short because somebody in the group posted their trade review on this. They're looking at the one hour. Um, they were saying prices inside weekly and daily supply. I agree. We broke that upward momentum. This was their shorting opportunity. And then I was telling them this would even be the first opportunity to get short at. Because we kind of removed this demand, kind of broke that upward momentum. That was evidence of selling starting to come in. And that would be the sell setup. Right? Rally base drop. Mm, what else? Ah, we got to go down. 15 minutes. Let's see what it looks like. Ah, one hour looks fine on the one hour. So break of upward momentum, removal of demand, supply created. That would be your pullback for a selling opportunity. But this is the one that they took. After prices have clearly removed demand down here and continue to trend down, they'd be selling the pullback back up into a supply zone. So I think their first target is hit from like the very low of this candle because we are coming up into like that. Like I said, on the four hour, there is that four hour. Ooh, what is this? Four hour. Ooh. Yes. I don't know what I just did. 
minimize. Screw it. Uh, that's the four hour rally base rally demand zone, right? So they're kind of out of that as of right now. Maybe that's their first target. I don't know. Um, but that was a good trading opportunity. Let's see. We talked about Bitcoin. We talked about, I think that's everything. I'm going to bring you guys another video next week, early next week, talking about setups. But there, let's get to this question. This is a question from David. Hi, Austin. Can you talk a bit more about counter trend trading, about the things we need to mind when we're doing it? Uh, regarding talking about profit stops, knowing if the market's only going to go into correction or if it's totally going to reverse out of supply or demand zone. Sometimes the price gives us a confirmation level and that price is turned from smaller time frame. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, you're kind of asking for like a massive trade review. That's kind of what we were just doing. But if we were to talk about counter trend trading for a minute, we would consider it as... Um, Obviously, you're trying to catch the counter trend move. You're trying to catch the reversal pattern. So if we look at, let's find a trending market. Uh, where was that trade? UST yen? Okay. I'm trying to think. Yeah, UST yen. So there was that. Uh, let's draw it up on this because it's already drawn. If this was our higher time frame, the weekly time frame coming from the weekly supply and the trend is up on the weekly time frame. Any shorts would be counter trend on the weekly time frame. This is very important to understand what time frames you are using, especially when using multiple time frame analysis, because this confuses a lot of people at the start. Is why would you be buying when prices are in an uptrend? You know, why would we be buying inside of demand when prices have already gone so far down? You know. There's no evidence of buying stepping in. This seems like you're calling the top and bottom. Understand, I, I totally get it. But when you use multiple time frame analysis, you need to use smaller time frames and understand that price turns from inside out. When you're taking a higher time, not a higher time frame trade, but a counter trend trade, you're not, you're typically not trying to find these, you know, five, six, seven to one trading opportunities. You're typically trying to find these quick scalps, you know, one to ones, two to ones, three to ones, and then you're out of the market because you understand what type of market condition you are in. You're in a weekly uptrend, right? The correction move might just be from, let's just say here down to here. Price comes back into this rally based rally. Where do you think this next uh, price is going to go from this rally based rally? If we are in a weekly uptrend, do you think we remove weekly demand zones or respect weekly demand zones. We respect weekly demand zones. We don't remove weekly demand yeah, we don't remove weekly demand zones in a weekly uptrend. We respect weekly demand zones and remove weekly supply zones in an uptrend, right? So this would be the corrective move and then this would be the impulsive move. Notice how the next impulsive move is a bigger move. That's typically where we want to go for our larger time frames or our larger risk to reward trades because we're going with our higher time frame trend. We understand what the market conditions are on the higher time frame. Like, hey, we're in an uptrend. We should be trying to buy pullbacks. That doesn't mean that you can't take selling opportunities inside a weekly supply zone in a weekly uptrend. Just understand like, hey, you are going against well, the grain of the market, we could say. You're going against the trend. You're going against the big money. But trust me, there are a lot of great opportunities up in here where you can find these quick one-to-one, two-to-ones, and then get out. You know? That's totally fine. That's a great opportunity. You're inside a higher time frame area where you want to be looking for selling opportunities. If you think about it, we remove weekly supply zones in a weekly uptrend. Right? We're, we might get that small correction. How we talk about it in our group, oh, like this is totally could go on for like hours and hours and hours. Understanding how trend changes from inside out, but let's say, mm, do I want to get into it? Oof, yeah, let's get into it. If we were to roll a ball down a hill, let me get this drawing right. So 
So if we were to roll a ball down, like a basketball down a hill, there's our basketball. We roll it down a hill, right? The ball's not going to stop just randomly at, at a, going down a hill, right? But if we put maybe another ball there, for example, not another ball, let's put a, say this is a basketball, and we have a tennis ball. So this is a basketball. <laughs> Hopefully I don't screw this up. There's our small tennis ball right down here. There's our basketball. If we're going downhill, right? This is understanding multiple time frame analysis and understanding how trend changes and understanding kind of corrections. We dive deep into this in the private group. All right, I'm back. So kind of just had to take a quick phone call. Um, let's start with this. Let's just say we have like a basketball up here and we have no nothing down here. We have no tennis ball. We just have a hill. We have a, we have a basketball at the top. If we push the basketball down the hill. Well, it's going to go down the hill, right? There's nothing that's going to stop prices or not stop the ball from possibly reacting from anything and reversing. So what we're going to see that on a chart is basically when you have an open profit margin. So that's basically like saying here, see how we have no opposing zones down up in this area. This is profit margin. I don't see any demand until at least down in this area. Right? So I would try to be selling pullbacks back into these supply zones. That's basically selling in a week in a weekly downtrend back into weekly supply, saying, okay, we're trying to sell supply zones in a weekly downtrend. And we have no opposing weekly demand till somewhere down in this area, right? So we don't have anything that might not stop prices until this area down here. So if we go back to the hill example. We have a ball, it goes down the hill, right? There's nothing stopping it. It's just going to continue rolling down. But if we put an opposing tennis ball, say in trading aspect, a day, uh, like a daily supply zone, well, what's going to happen? The ball is going to roll down the hill. It's going to hit the ball. It might give that like little slowdown in speed, but then it's just going to go like that, right? It's probably not even going to, it's going to have the most, the smallest little hiccup right? It's going to bounce it and then it's going to hit it and then continue rolling down the hill. It's not a higher, it's not an opposing um, object. This is kind of goes into Newton's law. It's not a larger time frame force. It's not a bigger object that will stop the force. So that's basically like saying weekly in an uptrend, price is going into a daily supply zone. Price is turned from inside out. Is a weekly or is a weekly time frame supply zone bigger than a daily time frame supply zone? Yes, right? So we're likely to remove daily, uh, oh, like obliterate, completely remove daily supply zones in a uh, weekly uptrend. So now let's just say, here's my hill again. Okay. Let's put a basketball and let's put another basketball. Let's put a real basketball, another full-size basketball, and a basketball up here. So we have a, ba a basketball going down the hill. It's got momentum. It's got speed, right? So it's probably going to remove things that are smaller, right? If we put another basketball down at the bottom of the hill, it's likely going to touch it, bounce back a bit, and then continue rolling down the hill. It's going to have that small correction move. That's the same thing as prices in a weekly uptrend coming into a weekly supply zone. Well, we're going to have that small correction possibly happening, right? So if we have a weekly, uh, not a weekly, a basketball down here, and we have a basketball up here, basketball going down the hill, it's probably going to run into the basketball, give that small correction, and then continue its trend down, right? So if we have a weekly uptrend, price is coming up into weekly supply, well, we're probably going to have maybe just this small correction and then continue price up higher. Right? We remove weekly supply zones in a weekly uptrend, and then we have weekly demand down here. We might just get that small correction move. But if we put, that's basically going weekly to weekly, but if we put a higher time frame in front of its way, what's the only thing that could stop a weekly uptrend? Well, an opposing higher time frame force, so maybe a monthly supply zone. So if we kind of think about it as here's another basketball, but now let's put... There's that. 
uh, let's put a Tesla. We put a Tesla right there at the bottom of the hill. Um, we put a car there at the bottom of the hill, right in front of, of the ball's path going down the hill. What's going to happen to this ball when it comes into the Tesla? Well, it's probably going to smash it and come to a complete stop, right? I don't know what I was doing there, but it's going, to going, it's going to come to a complete stop because a ball rolling down a hill is not going to remove or obliterate a massive car, a Tesla, right? So it's going to come to a complete stop and probably reverse a bit, right? Well, in trading, we consider it, well, if we're coming up into a monthly supply zone, well, the only thing that could stop a weekly uptrend is, well, a monthly supply zone an opposing higher time frame force. The only thing that could stop a ball going down is, well, a Tesla, an opposing bigger object, right? So that's kind of how I think about multiple time frame analysis. So go back and go back to your question about uh, trends. How do we trade with them? Well, if we're taking a counter trend trade, we need to understand that we are taking a counter trend trade and we're not trying to find a massive move, right? We're trying to find that small correction like this, right? We're going against the grain, so I think we need to manage our risk because we're going counter trend, right? We need to manage our risk appropriately and make adjustments to our trading uh, trading strategy. I'm not going to answer those for you because it's obviously different for everybody. Um, taking profits, it's the same thing, right? When you're taking profits in these counter trend trades, if you like, we look at the ball, we're only going to get that small correction and then prices might continue on. Sure, prices might just completely reverse and go like that but you know just for the sake of the example let's just say well you're coming into the same opposing force in a weekly uptrend coming up into a weekly supply zone right don't expect prices to just turn around and you know head 10 20 to 1 to 8 to 1 we're trying to find those quick 2 to 1s 3 to 1s trades and then get out of the market Understanding that we're against the trend, we're against the higher time frame grain, so we need to take profits early, manage our risk appropriately, right? So may, usually when I take counter trend trades, I take trades, might take profits earlier, right? Totally reverse supply and demand. I mean, obviously, like I said, it doesn't work every time, but we're going to take a probability based approach. That's just how I view the market, understanding you know higher time frames and what turns from inside out. Uh, I think I pretty much answered your question. Um, as for if we were trading with the trend, right, I would look for more higher time frame, like risk to reward trades. That's when you get your bigger risk to reward trades is when you're trading with the trend, right? Because then you can get those long imbalances, those big profit margins, instead of trying to find these short uh, targets. Nothing wrong with them. It's totally doable. Okay, even I do it, right? But just understanding the different market conditions you are trading in is important, right? I probably wouldn't want to put on a max risk risk trade when I'm taking a counter trend trade. I probably want to risk more when I'm trading with the trend. Also, something that you might want to consider is probably not setting and forgetting, meaning don't just sell a one hour supply zone embedded inside this weekly zone. Because, well, what's the trend going to be up on the one hour going into this weekly supply zone? Well, it's going to be up what's the trend going to be on the four hour it's going to be up what's the trend going to be on the daily it's going to be up so for you just to call the line in the sand and call the top and bottom is extremely aggressive so that's something i would not do i would wait for confirmation basically what we just talked about in all these other pairs go to my tips playlist i strongly recommend watching those tips playlist videos that is what i would recommend okay i think i've this is a lot longer than i intended to go on for uh that's it all right if you guys have any questions let me know shoot them in the comments below i don't know probably message me instagram twitter i don't know facebook trading view for all i care i don't know you let me know if you have any questions i'm here to help you guys if you have any questions have a great weekend or a great week if you're listening to this on sunday or monday or something like that and that's it cheers have a good one guys Bye bye